This is a super creamy carbonara made for 10 people. Oh yeah, today I'm gonna show you how to make carbonara for a party. I've got 10 friends coming over and I wanna make them my specialty. Surprisingly, cooking carbonara for 10 people, it's easier than when I cook it for two people. And I'll show you why. Step by step, I'll show you how to make an easy carbonara for 10 people. The carbonara is ready. Come and get your plate. Come on, this is mine. Oh, oh okay. Oh, where is my carbonara? We need to teach the young generation. Don't put cream in carbonara, okay, Alex? Alessandro, no cream in carbonara. Hey, he's smiling, he already knows. Huh? <laughs> there will be lots of people out there trying to put cream in your carbonara. You tell them, no, you don't do it, okay? <laughs> These are the ingredients to make carbonara for 10 people. One kilo of thick spaghetti, okay? I like to use thick spaghetti because it holds the sauce very well and I, I, in my opinion is best. Otherwise, you can use normal spaghetti. Try to use good quality, please. Basically, it's 100 grams per person. So that's why we have one kilo. We need 11 eggs, one per person plus the one on top. So we're gonna be using 10 egg yolks and one entire egg. Here we have 350 grams of finely grated pecorino cheese. 350 grams is the minimum. You can use more, but not less. We have 750 grams of pig chick, guanciale, with the skin on. So keep in mind, we're going to remove the skin and also the peppery part. So it will be just over 600 grams, I believe, once the skin is gone. If you cannot find guanciale, use pancetta, which is the pork belly. But guanciale, you can find it everywhere. Just have a look online and lots of black pepper. So if you have six people, you use 600 grams of pasta and seven eggs. If you have 12 people, you use 1.2 kilos of pasta and 13 eggs. And also work out how much guanciale and how much pecorino cheese you need. Then we need a large saucepan to cook the guanciale. We need a large pot of water to boil the pasta. We need a small pot with water that we're gonna be using uh, to, to, for the final stage, which I'll show you. We need three aluminum bowls, two that we're gonna be using for the sauce, and one that we need to use to uh, break the eggs. My guests are already at home. They're watching me cooking, okay? So the pressure is on, and I don't think we have much time. So we have about 20 minutes, no more. So let's start by preparing ourselves for this beautiful carbonara. So what we do, we get the guanciale here, and we remove the skin, okay? So when you remove the skin, try not to remove the meat and the fat. So just try to remove the skin on, okay? Just take your time, please. You don't wanna cook the skin because first, it's tough. It's not pleasant to eat it. Now, the skin is gone and we want to remove this. You don't have to, but as you can see, there's way a lot of pepper. It's too much, you know? So let's try to remove it. Let's remove all of this. It's actually easy for the pepper to come off. You don't really need to, you can actually scrape it down too. You don't really need to remove too much meat or fat. This is how I like to cut my guanciale, guys, okay? You can do whatever you want. I've been to Rome and the way they cut the guanciale in Rome, it's different from restaurant to restaurant. So you can cut this as you like. You can do cubes, you can do strips. I like to do strips and I'll show you why. Because, see in this one, here we have fat, meat, fat. Okay, so that's what I want on each strip. If I do cubes, we only have meat and fat, and this one, it's only fat. So it really depends with the type of guanciale you're working with. Depends who makes the guanciale. You know, this is an artisan product. Not everyone makes it uh, perfectly. Here we have our guanciale for a big crowd. Look at that, look how much guanciale we have. Ooh, this is beautiful. Now we place the guanciale in a nice large saucepan. It's cold at the moment, okay? So, get the saucepan. We just spread the guanciale everywhere. No oil, nothing. The fat of the guanciale will slowly, slowly melt and create the oil that we need. The magic oil that will give flavors to our carbonara. All right, now we turn the stove on a medium-low heat. We want to be gentle with the guanciale. We do not want to rush the guanciale, okay? So, now we put the guanciale on the stove. 
this guanciale, it's a lot. It's a, a large amount of guanciale in there. So it's gonna take about 10 minutes, but we need to make sure we stir so that the guanciale will cook evenly. Can you hear the sound? Can you smell it? <laughs> if you're making carbonara now, you can smell this. It's not beautiful. The guanciale smell is so powerful. The reason we removed uh, lots of paper from the guanciale is because otherwise the pan would have been black by now. But can you see the oil? Can you see the fat melting and creating this magical oil that would basically add flavors to the carbonara? So we can leave this like that now and it's gonna take about 10 minutes to cook. I would say every three to four minutes, go and stir. In the meantime, let's prepare the eggs. Now, this is the largest bowl I have in my house. And this is the one that fits perfectly on the um, large pot where I'm cooking the pasta water. So I'm gonna add the egg yolks in here, okay? This is the extra bowl I have to put the egg whites. So here we go. Open 10 eggs. We want 10 egg yolks because we have 10 guests coming over. Some of you are my asking, oh, what am I gonna do with the egg white? That's a shame. You can make amaretti, guys. I have a great recipe, my mother-in-law recipe, how to make gluten-free amaretti biscuits. So here we have 10 egg yolks for 10 people, and now we need to add the extra egg on top, the entire egg. So we break it and go straight in. Now we need to beat the eggs. You can use an electric mixer, or we can just use our hands to do it. I use my hands. And you just wanna beat them as much as you can, okay? So you have to do this for a long time, guys. If you use an electric mixer, it will do the job for you and it's a lot easier. But basically, you want this consistency, see? Guys, look, this is the consistency that we want, okay? Kind of, it's, it's uh, runny, but it's creamy, if you know what I mean. This is where the magic begins. It's starting to rain pecorino, oh yeah. The pecorino going inside, it's beautiful. We're not gonna use all the pecorino now. What we're going to do now, we're going to use half of the pecorino now. And we keep the other half for after. So let's mix it now. Look at that. Look how beautiful. This is where the magic begins. This is the most important part, I think, of the video, because you have to do this right. You do this right, your recipe will turn out. What I want to do here, I want to get a creamy egg cream. I want to get a creamy carbonara cream. Sort of this, you know, a little bit runny. But wait, we haven't done yet, we haven't finished yet. So what we need to do now, we need to add more pecorino. As you can see, I still got, still have a lot left. We need to add a lot more. I want this to become a little bit thicker. Because don't forget, soon we have to add the oil from the guanciale. Can you see the consistency now? Can you see how thick it's thicker now? This is the type of consistency that we want. Now that we have this beautiful consistency, let's finish with guanciale so we can add some guanciale oil in there. Look at the guanciale, it's almost ready. Look how much oil we have here. The guanciale is swimming in oil. This is all good guys, very positive. This oil will give us flavors. It's basically fat that melted. See, we have some guanciale here, it's not cooked perfectly. It's still a little bit raw. We want the guanciale to be crunchy. So that's why we, we stir to make sure that every single piece of guanciale is cooked to perfection. So you look at this and it looks like a piece of bacon. But can I tell you one thing? These flavors are 10 times better than bacon. All of them are cooked. See, look at that, I piled, I piled them up for you. This is how the guanciale should look. See, the meat is cooked, the fat is cooked, it's crispy. These are very important step, ladies and gentlemen. What we need to do now is to put half of this oil in the eggs, okay? We're gonna keep the other half, but half of the oil has to go in the eggs now. And now we quickly, quickly stir, mix this. 
So what the oil is doing, the oil is actually cooking the eggs at the moment and it giving, it's giving flavors. And flavors is what we need here, right? The, this bowl is nice and hot at the moment. What I like to do is to put a little bit more pecorino, just a little bit more. I'm gonna keep some for later. Now go crazy with the pepper, please. Crazy, when I say crazy, you need to go crazy with the pepper. Please, put as much as you can, as much as you want. This is the moment where you put pepper, a lot of pepper. Okay, pepper is there. Let's mix it now, let's mix this pepper and eggs. Nice. There's an extra bit of pecorino added, and it made it thicker. Great, this is the consistency, the final consistency that we want. This is the final consistency that we want for our carbonara cream. The carbonara cream is ready, the guanciale is ready, let's boil the pasta. The pasta water is ready, there is no salt involved in this recipe, okay? We have lots of pecorino, so we don't need any salt. Pecorino is already salty, naturally salty. Here I have the one kilo spaghetti, which I'm going to put in boiling water. You want to help the pasta to go in, okay? Otherwise, it will cook evenly. This pasta I'm using today, it takes 13 minutes to be cooked al dente, okay? 13 minutes. Give a quick stir, because we got one kilo here. We want to make sure that our spaghetti don't get stuck to the bottom, okay? So what I would suggest, every maybe three, four minutes, go and stir. It's a large amount. The pasta is boiling, so now let's prepare the sauces, okay? Here we have the large bowl with sauce. What I want to do is to transfer some of the sauce in this other bowl. Not too much, just enough to add some pasta in there. We're gonna, we're gonna basically, this is a very important step, and I'll show you why. I have transferred like one third in here and the rest stays in this one, okay? When the spaghetti are ready, we're going to put about two thirds of the spaghetti, about 700 grams in, this, in the big bowl and the rest in the small bowl. And then I'll show you what to do. This is the critical part of the recipe. So the pasta is boiling and look, I've got the other small pot here. And what I want to do, I want to make this uh, water very, very hot because what we're going to do, once the spaghetti go in the bowl, we're gonna switch this off. So the steam from this will keep this bowl nice and warm, nice and uh, hot. So it helps to combine all the ingredients. So make this uh, water very, very hot, boiling hot, so we can use it for our technique. This wonderful spaghetti are ready. They are al dente, look at that. They are beautiful. They're ready to be mixed with the carbonara sauce. So. Let's get this out of the stove. We don't need the stove anymore, okay? We have everything that we need now. We have two pots of hot water. That's all we need. Let's get pasta water. Let's get a nice mug full of pasta water, okay? We might need this. For this, if you have an assistant in the kitchen, that would be great. If you don't, do it yourself, and I'll show you how to do it. So here, pasta. Don't worry about the pasta water. Pasta water can go in. And I'm putting a little bit here. Putting a little bit of pasta in there. So we do, yeah, more than half and half. I would put more in the big one and less in the small one. But can you see I've got pasta water going in there too? This way, it's easier to mix our ingredients. This is where the magic begins, guys. We have to be fast now, okay? Here I've got hot water, hot pans here, okay? So what we do, the small one go on the small one. The big one goes on the big one. Okay, the heat will help us to combine all the ingredients. Okay, and I'm gonna use two hands now to do it. But if you have an assistant, please use an assistant. Okay, this is what I'm going to do now. I'm gonna mix it. Let's add a little bit of pasta water. Quickly do one at the same, do one first. Yeah, anyone can do this at home, guys. This is easy for everyone. Look, easily, easily mixing this. See how creamy it is already? Look at that, let's do the bigger one. See, the, see how creamy it is? See how beautiful and creamy this carbonara cream is? Oh, look at that. Look how fascinating. Let's put some pasta water at the bottom. So the pasta water helps not to cook the egg. 
And you do this if you can, otherwise get someone to help you. <laughs> look, look. Now it's time to put the guanciale in. So, go with the guanciale there. Guanciale in this one. The oil, the oil, this is flavors. Make sure you add the oil everywhere, okay? The oil goes in here, and the oil goes on this one. There's no wastage here, okay? Now, please go crazy with the guanciale. Yeah, more guanciale. More guanciale. Guys, have a look at this. Stunning, 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 stunning. Look how creamy, look how, look how creamy, look how creamy, look how creamy, look, 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 look. Is it the cream? Can you see the cream down there? This is ready to be served, ladies and gentlemen. Ready to be served. Look at that, look at that. Look at that creamy carbonara you got over here. Look at this, look at this creamy carbonara you got over here. Look, 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 look. Look how beautiful. This is probably creamier than when I make it for two people. Guys, never forget, pasta water is your best friend right now. When you see the carbonara starting to dry up, you add more pasta water. Don't be scared. The more you mix it, the creamier it gets. Look at that. Creamy is the key word today. Creamy is the key word. Look at that. Let's serve this beautiful creamy carbonara. Let's, let's prepare the nest for our guanciale to go in. Here is the nest. It's very important to top up a beautiful carbonara with the guanciale like that. Look at that. Look at this masterpiece, guys. I made this carbonara for 10 people and it looks better than when I do it for two people. Let's do the creamy taste taste. Look, looks like a catch of paper, to be honest. I <laughs> love it. Ready? Mmm. Mmm. So much cream. Look at that. Mmm. Full of flavors. Yummy. Salty enough. Of course, you can add more pecorino. So the more pecorino you put, the saltier it will get. Mmm. Beautiful, delicate cream. I can guarantee you, you're gonna use some bread to clean the plate because this cream, it's so good. Mmm, mmm. Guys, take a seat. The carbonara is ready. It will get stuck. Go and sit down. I'm serving this for you right now. Come on. Here we go. Here's one. Please put a guanciale on top. Guys, help me to serve, okay? Go with the guanciale, please. This was already a challenge, come on. Oh, look how creamy, the best part comes out. Oh, guys, the best part is here. Look how creamy this carbonara is. It's amazing. Mmm. The creamy taste, baby. The creamy taste. No cream in carbonara. We make creamy pecorino and eggs. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I will see you on the next Vincenzo's Plate video recipe. E ora si mangia. Carbonara. Vincenzo's Plate.